Hi. The Nissan Maxima turns 35 this year, having started life in 1980 as a boxy machine that epitomized everything that was wrong with design cues at the time. Stylistically it's set halfway between a Chrysler K car and a Mercedes 300D, but it hasn't aged as well as either. In fact, few of the generations of Maxima that came and went between then and now would be considered attractive. Thank goodness, the new 2016 Maxima looks great. More importantly, it's great to drive too. The new Maxima features a dramatic styling that might leave some confusing it with a Mazda. Perhaps that explains the huge Nissan badge on the nose, but though it may not be unique in every design queue, it all works. Strong, flowing creases and arches providing strong definition of fenders. The arching roofline tapers dramatically into the tail. Even the incredibly busy nose, full of lines and shapes, all comes together nicely. It's longer and lower than its outgoing predecessor, an unfortunate trend that continues unabated, but it is at least lighter than before, 82 pounds less to be specific, to beam the scales at 3,471. That extra length delivers stability on the road plus legroom inside, but the lowered profile does mean slightly compromised headroom. My six-foot frame was a little cramped in the driver's seat on cars equipped with a sunroof, while sitting upright in the rear seats is completely out of the question. It was slouch city back there for me. The seats are, to say the least, quite comfortable. I figure those quilted inserts are bound to look dated in a few years, but they are at least flush, hitting the right balance between supportive and comforting. There's enough give for highway droning, enough lateral support for spirited cornering. And you will likely want to do some spirited cornering, as that's part of the point of the car. As in years past, Nissan is labeling this at 4-door sports car, or 4DSC. Quite literally, there are 4DSC badges clumsily festooned inside and out, including on the shifter and etched in the turn signal lenses. The term sports car is perhaps slightly optimistic, but it is certainly a sporty car, especially in SR trim. I sampled both the SR and the Platinum, and found both to be quite rewarding to drive. The SR is certainly sharper, though far from harsh, and the extra headroom from the deleted moonroof a definite bonus. The Platinum offers a bit more cosseting, both from the suspension and the upholstery, and those who don't need the vertical room will appreciate the big, dual-panel glass roof. That CVT will surely be controversial, but I confess it didn't bother me too much. In the SR it was quick to drop a few virtual ratios to match throttle input, or of course a tap or two on the paddles will give you the revs you want more quickly. It's nowhere near as good as a dual-clutch gearbox, and the lack of a manual option is a shame, but it's certainly smoother and cleaner than an automatic. The Nissan Connect system offers all the functionality you'd expect, including OnStar like remote unlocking and the like. Nissan is proud of the smartphone-like gestures made possible on the 8-inch display that makes up the system, but the responsiveness is so sluggish you'll probably want to stick to taps. A secondary display resides between the TAC and Speedo, which can be used to display navigation info and the like. The new Maxima is not a cheap car, but it is punching above its weight, targeting competition from Acura, Audi and BMW. In many ways, it stands up quite admirably. The driving dynamics are good, the fit and finish fine, and it even looks good. It's the best iteration of the four-door sports car yet. Thanks for likes and subscriptions.